good afternoon everyone uh, respected principal dr swas kumar shetty sir professor mohammad alimuddin sir from national institute of sport yes. i think you are blessed unani medicine bangalore fellow faculty members of uh, national institute of uh, unani medicine bangalore and as well as kaheshri bm gankanwadi ayurveda mahavidyalaya belagavi and all the students pg students of the institute today we are very happy to observe one more mega event and the meaningful way as per the directions of national council of indian system of medicine new delhi last month we have observed the sixth siddha day successfully by conducting various meaningful programs now as per the directions of ncsm we are observing unani day on february 13 on this program in this concern we have organized under the guidance of our beloved principal we have organized many awareness programs to our ayush paternity medicos and as well as the common people regarding the other systems of medicines the intention behind is let the ayush students and as well as the community should sensitize should get sensitized should aware about the other systems of the medicine as we are moving towards the globalization of integrated medicine hence the health service can be served through all the systems of medicines with this motto we are celebrating this unani day with a meaningful program for the first time in our kla ayur world under the directions of uh, ncsm and under the directions of our beloved principal i all heartedly welcome all the dignitaries all the pg scholars students for this very function i all heartedly welcome professor ahmed alimuddin umri the professor of uh, national institute of uh, unani medicine bangalore for this very function sir we all heartedly welcome you sir so thank you sir sir so now i request our beloved principal dr swas kumar shetty sir to give a brief keynote about this program sir please a very good afternoon to all of you uh, most respected professor alebuddin sir uh, my dear colleague dr ashok patil all faculty members and all the delegates who have joined from different parts for this webinar on the sensitization to unani day at the outset i would like to really thank uh, professor alebuddin sir for accepting our invitation and gracing the occasion and uh, we are really looking forward for your valuable uh, insight over an orientation for unari day uh, as you all know that uh, the national commission for indian system of medicine and the ministry of ayush have been carrying out various innovative program to sensitize about the ayush tree and as a part of that they have taken up various uh, initiatives where they are trying to celebrate the ayurveda day siddha day unani day etc so that all of us get sensitized toward this particular system of medicine and it is not just restricted to one day of celebration it should be an integration which can be taken forward because until unless we try to understand the basic concept what are the areas like where are the vertical areas the horizontal areas where we can be able to integrate so when you are talking about integrative medicine or integration probably we always are looking forward to integrating what any one of the system of ayush with allopathy but probably more than the integration that can happen between ayush and allopathy i think lot of scope is there for the integration within our system within ayush system so that is why such sensitization can be very very fruitful in trying to know what are the similarities and differences in this system what are the areas where we could try to integrate and where we can possibly take up the some uh, pilot studies or some integrative protocols may be developed 
so that we are able to reach the people as an integrative approach for the betterment of the mankind. So for this, we are very happy to have Professor Alamuddin sir, who is the one of the senior professor in very prestigious Indian Institute of Unani Medicine, Bengaluru. And uh, again, on behalf of the Kaley Eye World and Kaley family, I would like to extend a very warm welcome to you all. And as you know, this Unani Day is celebrated as the mark of respect to Hakim Ji, and where it was because of his contribution, various institution was developed, uh, especially in different parts of the country. And now it has been spreading very well. Though it has come from the West, but there has been a lot of interest among the people regarding the Unani system of medicine, which has its own practices, like unique practices, like we all might have heard about the different uh, types of preventive health, health strategies, ma management of various diseases, some specialized therapies like the cupping therapies, etc., which we are all uh, very familiar with. And probably such orientation is what we're looking forward by Professor today. And I really appreciate Dr. Ashok Patil and the entire team of Swastata Department for taking an initiation in conducting this program. And I wish this uh, webinar a grand success. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your encouraging words. Now, as sir is arrived for the first time to KLE Air World, may I take this opportunity to uh, introduce Dr. Mohammad Alimuddin Kumri, sir, to the audience. Sir has completed her his post graduation in Yunani, presently working as a professor and head, Amreze Zilwa Taniyat and in charge of uh, Department of Malajita and a coordinator intermediary pharmacovigilance center for Yunani drugs at National Institute of Yunani Medicine, Bangalore. Sir is having a three decades of clinical, 23 years of teaching, two decades of research experience, guided 35 PG dissertations, 17 under progress and three PhD completed studies and two PhD research works. Uh, sir is guiding under his guidance. Sir's areas of interest are musculoskeletal diseases, lifestyle diseases, psychiatry, and skin. Research project sponsored by RGHS is under process. Sir is also working as academic in charge, nodal officer, administrator, uh, member secretary, institutional ethical committee, member board of studies of Unani PG, technical experts on dozier of Unani medicine, expert for the NAC, for the development of guidelines for Unani college, etc. Sir has a third 135 original research papers published in his uh, peer-reviewed and indexed journals. Sir, we are very fortunate to have you uh, as a resource person for our audience. Now I request uh, Dr. Mohammad Alimuddin Kumri, sir, to speak before the audience. Sir, please. Thank you. Thank you for the wonderful uh, cooperation extended with people and uh, thank you for the uh, beautiful introduction given by Dr. Ashok Patilji, very respectable principal, sir, Professor Suhas Kumar Shetiji, and uh, friend Dr. Ashok Patil, and the, uh, the other dignitaries who are attending from the rear end, uh, most of them from the Ayurveda uh, science of screen, and some of the Unani people also joined. I feel it's a great privilege to be with uh, this. Sri Baswapamalla Pakanakawadi Ayurveda Mahavishwa Vidyalaya Belagavi, one of the reputed institutions in the southern India, particularly in the Karnataka, who is working as a part of this KLE Academy of Higher Education and Research Center at Belagavi. Uh, I extend my greeting before I take this talk as because they come forward to celebrate the Unani Day on, as per the, on the directions of the statutory body of uh, Ayur system of medicine. For that, we are very grateful to you, sir, for the gesture you have been extended to celebrate this Unani Day. Uh, with this word, I take this privilege to present before all of you some of the basics. Of Is it the slide is visible now, sir? It's visible. Okay. Uh, my greetings to Sri B. M. Kanakawadi Ayurveda Mahavidyalaya, Kaili Academy of Higher Education, because they are the people who invited uh, me to 
share some of the views and concept of Yunani system of medicine on the occasion of this Yunani day as a token of appreciation and gesture to these people with thanks. Uh, I'll take you to the part of the deliberation as a pre preliminary part of discussion and understanding about the introduction of Yunani system of medicine yes, and its uniqueness. Is it audible now, sir? Is there any issue? Hello, Ashok, sir, Swa, sir, anybody? Is it slides are visible and my voice is clear? The slides are clear, but the voice is breaking a bit. Okay, then I have to. Is it I'm audible? Hello? Hello? Is it audible? Hello, hello sir. Is it okay? Yeah, uh, it's okay now, sir, but uh, the voice is breaking a bit. Oh. Earlier it was fine, sir. Okay, probably after... Uh, before, before, before presentation. Yeah, now, now it is better, sir. I think you can go ahead now. Okay, okay, sir. So, uh, the outlook of my presentation, probably the next 45 minutes and whatever the time we are going to spend with you to act based upon the actually listening and learning capabilities of our August audience. Uh, the outlook of my presentation, I have made something like first we'll try to understand this introduction to Yunani medicine, followed by some of the fundamentals of Yunani medicine. Where I think if we can, uh, if we can switch off your uh, camera, I think uh, the okay. device would be better, sir. Okay, then I'll let me see this camera. camera. How about this, sir? Is it okay? Yes, sir. No, it's fine, sir. No, it's fine. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, as a part of the presentation, the outlook is first, we'll try to understand something about the introduction to Yunani medicine and followed by some fundamentals of the Yunani medicine. Like every medical science, they have their own potential. Uh, Molika Siddhantas, like what we have, the Umuri Tabaya, Asbabi Sitta Zaruriya, Tabiya, very few things I have inculcated. Beyond that, there are so many things which, because of the paucity of the time, we are trying to cover this. Later, we'll try to understand the concept of health and disease in Yunani medicine. And uh, the diagnostic methods, the procedure through which how we'll be knowing about the existence of disease from the physiological to pathological condition. And the most important part of every system of medicine is the principles and methods of treatment. Like what treatment uh, Yunani system of medicine will be having and how what is the principle lies behind the treatment of Yunani medicine. And at most, the more major part of my discussion will be about the uniqueness of Yunani medicine. Maybe. Some of the thing may be overlapped with other uh, alternative system of medicine which is existing in India or maybe ab abroad. But to the best of my understanding from my part, I have brought some of the things as a uniqueness of the Yunani medicine. So dear friends, uh, as this uh, Yunani system of medicine, it is an integral part of Ayush system of medicine in India. Like we know that government of India came out of the separate ministry called as Ministry of Ayush. This is stands for an acronym for the Ayurveda, Yoga, Naturopathy, Yunani, Siddha, Swarikpa, and Homeopathy. So, Yunani is one of the integral part of the I system of medicine in the India, which is recognized by the ministry and undertaken by. If you look at this uh, as a part of the continuation of introduction to Yunani system of medicine, basically this system of medicine is originated in the ancient Greece. Uh, there is a place called as Yunan, that is Ionian for the Greek people. From there it is originated somewhere in the ancient period, some long, the thousands of years of back. And the, these are the people, Ascalipus, Empedocles, Plato, Aristotle, are, these are the people, the philosophers of the Greek, based upon their teachings. Later, Hippocrates made some of the thing as the theoretical understanding of the disease by just ignoring uh, the superstitious condition to whom we contemplated as the cause of the disease. I mean to say, 
based upon the uh, pre-Socratic philosophers of the Greek, like Ascalpas, Sindoclus, Plato, Aristotle theories, Hippocrates came out of with a new concept of medicine, which truly lies on some, there is a cause and relationship of the disease. That's the reason we believe that Hippocrates is the father of medicine. From his teaching, only the science of United medicine came into existence. Later, some of the other physicians like Vescoridus, who contributed a lot uh, with the reference to the pharmacology of Unadi, followed by Rufus, who enlightened so many things about the understanding of the disease and treatment. After the Greek physicians, we have one of the renowned personality from the Roman part of the physician is the Galen, uh, who were lived somewhere between the first to second uh, AD. Uh, he is the one who contributed a lot about understanding the anatomy and physiology. Apart from that, he explained several importance of the adiviyat, the what is called the drugs, and he refined some of the theories of the Hippocrates that were executed for the practical use. So the beginning of Yunani medicine started from the ancient Greek, followed by some of the people who contributed for the development of the science by the Roman, like a gallant. Lateral, it spreads to the uh, uh, the countries of Arab and Persian nations where Rabat Dabri, Razi, Avicenna. Al Qasim Zuhrawi, Ibn Betar, like these are the people of Arab and Persian nations. They have developed this science, inculcating the, con the contemporary medical sciences into the science of Yunani medicine. With this point, I can say these are the Arab and the Persian physician. They have learned so many things from the contemporary medical sciences of those days. They included into their uh, compendiums outcome. Finally, they made this Yunani science as a globally acceptable with some of the evidence-based things are there. Later, it is introduced into India by the Arabs and Persian people in, in India somewhere in the 8th and 9th century, where uh, some of the rulers of the Indian provincial governments, they took this, they picked the system based upon its outcome and its uh, uh, effectiveness. Some kingdoms like the Sultans of Delhi, Khilji, Tughlaq, Mughal people, and there is one particular family called, called as Khandan -e Sharifi in the northern part of the India. They have contributed a lot to promote and uh, to practice this system of medicine in, in India. Uh, out of these several people, I would like to throw some light upon Mr. Hakim Ajmal Khan, who is a Masir also. He is a patriot and a freedom fighter and Hakim. Uh, because of his contribution to the Yunani system of medicine only, Past seven years, government of India came out of uh, the 11th February as a part of the birth anniversary of Hakim Ajmal Khan. This National Unani Day has been declared. So, to commemorate his contribution to the development and promotion of Unani system of medicine in India, this Unani Day is being celebrated throughout the India as well as abroad also. And as a part of this, United Day celebration only today I am addressing you people about the introduction of Unani and its importance. So uh, here these are the people to whom we have, they have contributed to the science of Unani medicine. If we come to the part of the fundamentals of the Unani, the Molika, the basis of Unani system of medicine, uh, I, I have just emphasizing on three important points. That is the Umure Tabaya. There are seven uh, physical factors are there. Followed by Asba the Sitta Zaruriya. There are six essential prerequisites are there, which is there with the human body always throughout the life. And finally, there is one tabia that is called as nature. The, for this Greek people at the in the classical physiology, it was called as medicatrix nature. All these things are along with some sub-categorized faculties of ours are there, they together make the human body functioning properly. So these are the three major fundamental parts of the Unani system which we try to understand. Uh, as a part, if you look at this Umure Tabaya, the primary component of the fundamentals of Unani medicine, this Umure Tabaya is a purely Arabic term, which stands for Umur means certain factors, Tabaya means physical factors. These physical factors may not be the substitute, exact substitute of a Latin term. The near understanding of this Umure Tabaya, according to the Unani philosophy, the science, uh, every human being is being regulated. The principles related to human biologies are surrounded with seven natural factors that make up the totality of the human beings. As a result, the seven 
natural factors or the physical factors are the first one what we believe are the arcan that could be considered as the nearest latin term as the elements uh, maybe my arbedic brothers uh, probably they believe it like the bhutas like pancha bhutas are there it seems to be and the second important ur of this yunani system of medicine is the mizaj temperament is supposed to be the literal translation for the latin word uh, i believe it's supposed to be prakriti according to ayurvedic science it seems to be and the most important point upon which the yunani system of medicine play very pivotal role are the concept of akhlaq that is the humors the body fluids uh, maybe it it something like we can collate with to the doshas of according to ayurveda system of medicine beyond these three the other four important umur are the factors of yunani medicine what we believe there are certain organs followed by some ruh that is pneuma is there and this ruh try to uh, initiate the faculties of certain bodily organs as a result different functions will carry out in the body so these are the seven physical factors and the natural factors with where the yunani people pay much attention and these are the seven factors which are responsible for the human biology which makes that human body totality to function let us try to understand one each together arcan the nearest uh, terminology suppose we can consider as an element because in the history philip of the greek philosophy arcans are something like the base very basic bodies or roots or the origins uh, aristotle is the one who gave it arcan as a term element uh, these are the primordial substances which carry certain qualities are there according to yunani or the yunani theories of science yunani science theories are based upon four arcans are there that is the center of all these uh, arcans are the earth the uh, earth upon which we have water upon which we have air and the the most uppermost part of this elemental is fire it means ag hawa pani vitti this is a chronological order from above downwards so yunani believe that every the, in the cosmos in the universe almost all the living and non living beings are created with the uh, reactions and the actions of these are as amalgamation of one or other elements so called the arkan so as a whole every arkan ruk will be having one quality that could be either is a hard dry wet or cold sometimes it is a combination of hard dry hot wet cold dry and cold wet so these are the four elements uh, that the greek philosophers strongly believed about it the second most important fundamental aspect of the yunani system of medicine that umur is the mizaj mizaj is as i have mentioned this is the nearest terminology maybe it is a temperament some people also call it as a constitution also there are different different versions are there but nearest understandable point is temperament it seems to be and the, what i believe according to ayurveda it seems to be the prakriti it is defined as an admixture of a different element basically this mizaj will came into an existence when different elements there are admixture and as a result their qualities in a specific ratio there will be a one particular kind of mizaj will arises and these mizaj will be there for in all the living and non non living beings also and based upon the concept of this mizaj based upon the concept of the mizaj zoology in the yunani system of medicine the human beings and the personalities of the human beings have been categorized to four like damavi mizaj balgami mizaj safravi mizaj and saudavi mizaj and the yunani system pay much attention about the mizaj of the patient mizaj of the disease and selection of the drug based upon the mizaj to treat certain conditions also and the third important uh, fundamental principle of yunani system of medicine that umur is the akhlaq akhlaq are nothing but the body fluids in the body there are different fluids are there out of which hippocrates uh, believe that there are particular colored body fluids are there based upon the color he gave it different name the red color fluid is called as the blood white is the phlegm black is the sauda that is a uh, melancholy and yellow is the uh, the choleric so he believed that there are different there are so many body fluids are there particularly these four colored body fluids are called as the akhlaq 
uh, that can be literally considered as a humors and the existence of humor in their normal quality and quantity will represent the individual health and the disease condition and uh, likewise based upon this akhlaq arkan and miz mizaj that personality types and traits are also being defined uh some uh, unani physician they have also explained the existence of these four different fluids or the akhlaq in the body suppose we collect the blood after a venesection or phlebotomy take in the test tube leave it for some time if you try to put the test tube in some hot water probably at end of some time you will be find different color layered colors are there the most sedimented part of this test tube will be the black color above which will be have a different color and above which will have a yellow or the white color all these four colors represents the four colored body fluids which are what is called as the blood phlegm black bile and yellow bile so this hypothesis explains that this hypothesis proved by means of this small experimentation that in human body the body fluids are only four colored one and four colored body fluids are given as a dam balgam safra soda and accordingly their dominance and their what is called as the quantitative qualitative derangement can leads to abnormality of the human body the fourth umur of the human body is the aza aza means there is an organ uh, we uh, unani physicians we unani scientists they categorize the body organs into two that is a simple organ we call it as a aza basit or aza mufarrad the single or simple organs and in contrast to that there are different compound organs are there so two types of organs are there in the human body if you look at the simple organs here, here i have brought around 10 major simple organs beyond this there are three other ones are also there that like is bone gazruf cartilage nerve asab with root tendon rabat is the ligament shriyan is the artery veins are the vareed ghisha the membranes laham is the muscle shaham is the fat most of the physician they believe these are the 10 simple organs beyond that also there are three other uh, substances are there like nail hair and some other things are there so to go to the best of unani people's understanding apart from this uh, 10 three more simple organs are there and the uh, compound organs are the organs which are form as a mat as a inculcation of the as a cluster of one or two uh, simple organs if you look at this uh, in unani we believe that aza murakkab the best compound organs in the human body are called as aza raisa which is also can be considered termed as vital organs there are four vital organs primarily for the survival of the species and the genera we need to have heart this that is the kal dimagh and jigar this is called as the heart a brain and liver these are the three things are important for the survival of all the human beings if you wanted to go for the survival of the generation of species uh, this is bakhan nasl ke liye we need to have another vital organ that is the azai tanasulia or the genital organs so unani believe that there are four different vital organs and their functions are going to regulate the survival of the human body as well as the survival of the different species of the genera the fifth umur tabba is the arwah ru basically the ru can be considered as a pneuma uh, in fact some people are also interpreted like the spirit spirit may be a different but a ru is something like this is the one with what we inhale into the body from which as, as a mechanism as a process of uh, what is called as the metabolism it transfer from lungs to the circulatory system and it reaches to different part of the body where it can carry no nutrition and some of the vital energy to the different parts of the body so ru we have different kinds of ru like ru hai haiwani ru hai tabai ru hai nafsani nafsani will take care of all the psychic functions tabai for this cardiac and haiwani is for Uh, cardiac and the hepatic functions are all being carried the khua is something like the powers are the fu uh, functioning are there according to unani there are four different khuas are there powers we have like khuwat uh, nafsaniya which deals with the psychiatric psychiatric power and khuwat haiwaniya this is for this cardiac and this uh, what is called as the hepatic and finally the fourth one is related to the reproductive uh, powers are there all these 
faculties and powers they perform different functions and these functions is called as the afal afal stand for the functioning likewise that the vital organs are there the major three functions of heart liver and the brain will be carried out by different functions and uh, apart from these uh, three major functions there are sub categories of functions as are also there as a whole these seven umura tabaya will take control of the human body with the help of tabiat or the physics that makes the body to be in a normal position as a totality to control physical functions of the human body if anything deranged in any one of the seven ultimately the body's immunity or the medicatrix nature or the tabiat physics will be disturbed as a result the disease will manifest as i said in the fundamentals of the unani medicine the second most important part uh, beyond the umura tabaya is the asbab e sitta zaruriya basically this is an arabic term asbab stand for causes sitta is stand for the numerical value 6 zaruriya mean essential for the survival of any human being or the living beings uh, we need to have all these six essential prerequisites are there without which nobody can survive all living beings need to have all these things for example uh, hawa that is the ambient air the air where where we are living it is essential without which nobody can survive makula mashroom bean that eatables and the drinkables like food and water uh, anything which is in the, uh, which is uh, consumed in the form of a dry or liquid all those things which comes under the part of the makula mushroom similarly uh, the third important sub essential causes is the harakat sukun badi this stand for bodily movement and repose is there because every person should have some minimal body movement and accordingly there is some minimal rest is required for the body if it is not going to be happen the people may likely to develop uh, some abnormalities likewise there is harakat sukun nafsani also unani uh, science pay much attention to not only to the body repose and action but at the same time unani also believes about the harakat of sukun nafsani I mean how much of uh, what is called as the work to be given to the psychic faculty and how much rest is mandatory essential if it is not the equilibrium is not maintained then it can also leads to the number of multiple cause diseases are there like there must be balance of normal exa it means sleep and wakefulness is also very important uh, we have a very standard prescribed what is the, the sleep and wakeful qualities and the duration according to ages of the individuals there and the most important part of the asbab e sitta zaruri is this etbaz wa istifraq which stand for retention and eliminate elimination and uh, retention and elimination evacuation and elimination of the thing where what are the thing which are needed to be retained into the body that are essential to provide energy to the body or the part it become part of the body the thing which are required are to be retained as called as the etbaz and the thing which is not required to the body to be eliminated from the body is called as istifra or elimination so the second most important fundamental part of the unani medicine is the importance of asbab e sitta zaruriya to maintain the normal health of the individual when the health the individuals health are right or to prevent the disease sometimes what happen is the person infected with any disease these asbab e sitta zaruriya will help them to eradicate to control uh, the related diseases and third most important part according to the fundamental principle of unani system of medicine is the tabiat i said tabiat this is a classical concept of medicatrix nature uh, and greek physician believe that there is this one nature the one is physics is there the innate capacity of the individual we call it as in unani huwat e mudabbir e badan huwat is some force fact of mudabbir mean which causes controlling which neutralizes according to the requirement and badan is the body bodily mudabbir e huwat there is one force which uh, which controls all the powers if you look at this functional part of this tabiat this is the supreme power of the body which control all the physiological functions of the body and also it provide resistance against the disease that is it helps in prevention of the disease in fact umura tabaya together helping this tabiat to keep the body uh, in a healthy state so these are the three major components of the fundamentals of unani medicine we beyond that we have every segment of this fundamental we have sub categorizations of that if you look at the concept of health and disease in unani medicine because fundamentals are very vast 
uh, I just wanted to put very uh, glimpses of this. Uh, let me try to uh, place before you what Yunani people believe with reference to health and how the diseases are. Uh, in fact, according to the Jalinos, the Galen and other Yunani physician, according to Yunani based upon this perception, the human body is of three in a different states. The states of human bodies are three. One is it's a purely in a health state or sometimes it could be in a disease state that is the person suffering from diseases. Beyond these two, there is another state called as the Halate Thalasa, that is the tertiary state or the third state where neither the person or the individual is a purely in a health state nor in a disease. I'll try to explain you this particular condition. We know that, Alhamdulillah, by the grace of Almighty, we are all healthy. But at the same time, we are looking at the people in the hospital who have been admitted for treating the disease there, disease one. Look at the population who are geriatric one, old age people, are the children. If you ask them, they said that, of course, my health is equally good. Sometimes we are I'm not good. So the geriatric population and the health state of the geriatric population is considered to be neither health nor disease. Uh, maybe like children's pediatrics also, their state condition is also. This is what some Yunani physician believe that human body, the state of human body are either it could be in a healthy state, disease state or there is a third state which stands for neither too healthy nor disease. Uh, likewise, the, the cause of health and disease is absolutely depend upon the equilibrium of the akhlaq. Here the word equilibrium, why I am using is this equilibrium stand for a qualitative and the quantitative consideration is there. If all the body fluids, humans, akhla, that is dam, balgam, safra, soda, if they are qualitatively mean with their qualitative attribute like heart, cold, moist and wet, if they are good and by the same time the quantitative also, what is the quantity of this humor to be there in the body, if they are in a normal way, then only the health will be exist. If any qualitative and quantitative disequilibrium happens within the Akhlaat, the humors, it can lead to the manifestation of the disease. So I hope that we uh, can able to uh, find the right meaning. The state of health and the disease is totally depends upon the equilibrium with reference to the qualitative and the quantitative balance of the four body fluids along with the other umurita bhaiya. Uh, as far as this uh, prevention of the disease is concerned, I already explained about the role and importance of asbabi sitta darya, that is six pre uh, essential factors are the prerequisites are there where we have come across about the ambient tear, eatables and the drinks and the body movement and the repose, psychic movement and the repose and finally the sleep and wakefulness and retention and elimination. All six, there should be balance. Otherwise, we need to go for modulation into this. As a whole, if you look at this Yunani, Yunani medicine deals with treating the diseases if the person is suffering. If the person is likely to develop the disease. For that, we have the clear concept of the prevention of disease under the chapter of Hibzan as health. Hibzan means prevention or protecting from the disease side. As a whole, if you look at this, Yunani medicine deals with overall development of the individual, physical, mental, and social well being. So, this is what the concept of health and disease in Yunani medicine, which speaks about overall development of the individual's physical, mental, and social well being. Let me take you to the disease part. What Yunani system believe that we have come out of the classification of the disease. Basically, the Yunani followed different methods of classifications are there. The raw method of Yunani classification beyond that, like uh, genetic diseases, degenerative diseases, some the convention says how they categorize infectious diseases. But we have our own classification of the disease. Like there are diseases which are of simple in nature, called we call as a barze mufarad. Mars stand for disease, Mufar is the simple diseases where only one, diff, one particular entity will be there, one, diff, one particular organ will be affected. In contrast to this, there are other group of diseases that are called as Marze Burakka, mean compound diseases are there. It is an amalgamation of one or more kind of simple diseases will be there. We have so many diseases are there, either which comes under the category of Mufar or Burakka. Uh, by the same time, another classification of disease according to Yunan is that there. Some diseases are amraja khalaki, mean they are congenital, they are came from the neonatal, they are from since birth. But most of the diseases are even acquired also, somehow ikkesabi, they have been acquired. Based upon the sub of the cause, uh, the diseases are categorized into 
there is a sewer mizaj. As I said in the fundamental principle, arkat, elements, mizaj, temperament, akhlaq. These are the three basic substances which is going to regulate the human body's functionality and the dysfunction. Uh, as we know that there are four simple qualities are there, hot, uh, dry, moist and wet. And the, all these elements, all these humors, they have the compound temperaments are there. Hot and dry, hot and moist, cold and dry, cold and moist. If anything goes wrong with this temperament of either the fluids, there's akhlat or the elements that can lead to this temperament, we call it as a suya mizaj. And this suya mizaj could be a sada, simple, we were only one of the quality, either there will be increasing in the hardness, or there will be increasing the coldness, there will be increasing the moistness, or there will be increasing in the dryness will be there. If any diseases which are represented with this only one quality, one only single quality abnormal, such a disease are categorized as suya mizaj sada. If it is an amalgamation of two different qualities, like hot and cold, hot and dry, hot and wet, cold and dry, such considered as a compound ones. Likewise, we have eight. Madhi stands for there is the involvement of the substance. This substance could be later what the people have found out any microorganism. But according to Yunani, this Madhi stands for the matter, substance. The substance is one of the wood that akhlat, humors are there. Like what we believe, Vata Pitta, uh, Kapha is there. Uh, we believe in Yunani, either it could be a Dhamavi, Balgavi, Safravi, Saudavi, Rihi or Mai, Madhi. So any matter is involved and the, at the such a matter's temperament, bizarre is deranged. As a result, some disease will manifest. So one category of the diseases are based upon the distemperament, that is the change in the bizarre, either it could be a simple or compound and it could be involvement of the matter. Uh, another category based upon the causes of the disease classification is suya tariki. There are certain structural malformations are there. For example, a child is born with, there is a defective shape will be there, and like hydrocephalus. And with that dimension, something what happened, no? Uh, some body parts are, either it could be atrophied or sometimes it could be a hypertrophied. The dimensions have changed. Sometimes what happened, no? There is a uh, suya tariki ba adad number will be decreased like some people will born with uh, more than 10 fingers either in the upper hand the lower hand some people have uh, some digits also there any increase or decrease in the number of the organs of the part will consider under the category of a suya tarkeem some organs are there which are displaced in this normal position deviated or alignment issues are there such are such diseases or categories under the uh, category of suya tariki ba vajza that's position. The third category based upon the cause is tafaruk et loss of continuity. This could be uh, as a result of mechanical injury or as a sequelae of the body phenomenon also there are some different things will be happen. The best example of a tafaruk et loss of continuity can be say barza buraka will be the inflammation, warm, wounds, laceration injuries etc etc this is one way of understanding the classification of different diseases in our medicine let me take you to the diagnostic methods because uh, we have come across the fundamentals we have come across the cause of the disease and how to maintain the health and uh, we also know about the disease different disease categories are also there is a cause and relationship of the disease then how to diagnose the diseases classically Yunani people used to follow the general examination procedure like observation, auscultation, palpation, percussions also there. Uh, overall, looking the patient starting from the head up to the toe, uh, followed by the specific examination, which are very particular to Yunani system of medicine is the examination of the nubs, that is pulse examination, uh, moina bowl, that is urine examination, moina barrage, that is your feces and the stool examination. These are the three major methods of examination. Of course, Yunani physician, they are authorities in the Nadi Pariksha, uh, but now the art of Nadi Pariksha is uh, almost, uh, say this is negligible, very few people are know the art of diagnosing through the Nadi Vavastha, but still we are trying to follow this uh, urine examination to, to, to find out the procedure of the, the disease and the effect of the drug with the intervention and use of the drugs of conction and the conditions. But you, uh, feces also will be taken care for understanding diagnosis. We have specific indications of the markers of all these parameters. 
And beyond this, I said for systemic examination, like conventional size people, we do follow inspection, palpation, percussion, and auscultation. And today, to validate the classical diagnostic method with the conventional size, today we rely on laboratory investigations of the conventional size, that is, uh, I can say biochemistry and the pathological, it includes microbiological uh, examinations also. Right. Uh, let me come to the part of the treatment. Uh, before I take you to what are the treat methods we have, some principle we follow before we take into the uh, starting the treatment. You know, I believe that uh, the treatment part is totally holistic approach. Here, we take the human being as an individual complete entity instead of focusing on the symptom what the patient is going to uh, present before the uh, what is the physician. Uh, I mean to say the conventional science concept of reductionism is quite opposite with the concept of holism. Like we take complete human body into consideration where treatment will be focused upon the individual's visage and the predominance of the madha and the sada, whatever the etiological factor and keeping the mental and the physical condition along with the environmental factors of the individual, this uh, holistic treatment will be provided. And uh, the most important point is Yunani system of medicine follows the ilad between the principles of contradiction. Mean, suppose if a person is suffering with the disease of cold temperature, the contradiction, principle of opposition will be there. If the quality is hard, such a condition will be treated, keeping the patient's temperament into consideration, the drugs which are contradictory like if it is a heart, we will try to treat cases with cold drugs. Similarly, if the quantity is high, that will be tried to minimize with the quantitative consideration. So the principle of contradiction is applicable in all the treatment modalities that I'll explain you later. And third principle is, before taking the treatment into as a whole, we'll try to elucidate the cause that is allies above, removing of the cause appropriately. For that, the exact treatment procedure is mentioned like Tanhiya. Uh, probably Ayurvedic people, they follow the procedure of Shodhana, it seems to be I, I, to the best of my memory. Uh, that where we will try to eliminate the morbid matter, what matter is predominantly happening present accordingly by selecting some of the specific drugs, keeping of giving of the drug of the conction Based upon the dosha, filth, we have a specific duration of giving of the treatment for tantukhya, followed by, there is a conation also, function and conation, where uh, keeping the person health condition and the matter of elimination into consideration, if it is required, we will try to normalize the visage of the individual, giving appropriate therapy, keeping into the consideration of the whole body condition of the patient. Followed by sometime, if it is required, the huyadmin tonics will be given or any pain management things are there. So, uh, like all such as appropriate drugs will be given. These are the principles what we apply in the treatment uh, while giving to the patient. If it uh, literally try to find out what are the methods Yunani system of uh, people follow for the treatment, we have four very wonderful uh, globally accepted treatment methods are there. That is Ilaj Bil Dawa. Dawa stands for drug pharmacotherapy, where primarily we'll focus on single drug management. If it is not, we'll assume are added with the compound drugs. The part of this Dawa will come. If we talk about the Dawa, we have 90% of the drugs what we use are from the nature, the herbal one, uh, to the extent animal and the mineral source of the drugs we will use. Any drug which is used for the purpose of a treatment will become under the category of Ilaj Bil Dawa. And these drugs will work according to the principles of Yunani, what we have done in separate uh, description because of the time is not permitting me to enlighten on all these things. First, primarily we'll take Dawa and Ilaj Bil Giza, uh, sometimes keeping the person and the disease condition, we'll try to put some emphasis on the importance of the dietetics also. Here I said, in Yunani, we follow the principle of contradiction, mean usul bizid. Usul is the principle, bizid means opposite. In principle of dietetics, we follow two, uh, while giving the dietetics, we follow two principles are there. Suppose if a person is suffering with a cold temperamental condition, disease, 
almost the diets will be prescribed the diet either it could be what is called as a food eatables or drinkable substances like kashaya joshamda sharbat majur uh, emphasis will be try to pay the drugs which is made of the contradictory to the condition and by the same time quantitative consideration also will be taken into care i'll just put one example according to unani this obesity is considered as seminiferous and this is one of the diseases of uh, what is called as the bulgami that is a cold temperament where we need to treat the patient with the drug which are of hot temperament qualitatively what? and by the by the principles of treatment of dietetics we also apply the quantitative di- principles of dietetics where the patient will be suggested the four principles like total complete cessation of the drug diet or abstinence from the diet reducing the diet or increasing the diet as per the requirement of the patient uh, two principles will be applicable while administering the drug there is a qualitative and the quantitative if the patient of tuberculosis is there drugs along with the diet which are have of high nutritious value and more quantity will be recommended ilaj ki tadbir uh, this is one of the very uh, attractive as uh, sir uh, suhas kumar sir was also talking about the cupping of course we have very wonderful regimens like some 100 or 100 regimens we have they are giving very promising results i'll put some enlightening on this this uh, based upon primarily will try to cure the try to uh, treat the patient with the drugs if drug and diets are not going to do then we'll take the help of regimens also that is regimens means with tadabir also list of tadabirs are there whichever is required that will be administered and the most advantageous part of our unani science of medicine we have ilaj bill here that is a manipulative therapy of the surgical parasurgical procedures uh, in the beginning I, I, i said about that i have mentioned there is a description about abu al khasim zohrawi who is the 11th century physician he is the man supposed to be the modern science of people modern surgeons also believe that he is the one who laid down the modern surgical procedure because from the text what we learned he is the one who developed around 200 surgical devices according to the requirement and his work kitab ut tasrif is still were used throughout the western part of the country up to 17th century so unani also pay attention to the treatment of surgical procedures also uh, as i said ilaj bhi dawa we use herbs either it could be single or compound we have different combinations nearly some 30 30 plus pharmacopias are there apart from non pharmacopoeic preparation some animal drugs will also there mineral drugs are also be used as a treatment if you look at the drugs different dosage forms are there probably we are the people who provide more what is called the sugar and honey based preparations to the suffering humanity bitter medicine in a sweet form so that the people will give, uh, get much benefit by taking this medication so if you look at the dosage form there are so many drugs which are uh, in the solid form like a powders tablet pills tablets are there different uh, dosage forms we have liquids like joshanda hisanda sharbat kutur semi solid like what ayurvedic people is supposed to be having chavantrasha leha sarde we have different versions of semi solids are there like majur jawarish kanira lau uh, topical creams like rohan oil tila zimat liquids etc and by the base at the same time we have some evaporative bukhari is also there uh, like gases substance like laklaka bukhur so like uh, the different states of a medicine we have four different kind of administration dosage of drugs are also there the second is not the, the part of treatment method what i have already mentioned was this ilaj tadbir the most nowadays the people are very passionate to get the benefits of hijama uh, maybe if i get any time i will put in light we will focus more about the beneficial effects of the hijama irsale alakh like this is a leaching therapy we follow pashoya uh, foot bath amalai cauterization dutul probably you to have this uh, dhara uh, dalak hamam i think this is the one what we have very advantages in the regimental therapy is a hamam uh, the, as i said ilaj related surgery surgery as a abul hasan zohrab is the therapy who developed different surgical equipments and we too follow different surgical procedures also and these are some of the devices abul hasan develop abul hasan zohrabi developed and he depicted in this uh, classical surgical books also and uh, i would like to bring some of the important books to the uh, august audience is al khanun kitab was uh, the work of avicenna uh, i hope some of the unani uh, ayurvedic fraternity people might be knowing about 
Avicenna his contribution because Al Karnun uh, is one of the major book of uh, choice of the uh, studies for the European Medical Universities of the 17th century. And uh, like there are different Kamil Uthana, Kitab Uthasar, this is a surgical book. And uh, I'm very happy to place before all of you, Razi is the one who is given a very clear description about the treatise on the smallpox and the measles uh, and the treatment also. Kitab al and this is the one uh, during the 70th AD and up to 12th century, nearly some 2000 different herbs and their indications have been mentioned in this book by Antaki. Coming to the very conclusion part of my discussion, probably my time is also over. Uniqueness of the Yunnan medicine. This is my understanding. Uh, otherwise, you people have to uh, tell us because uh, you people have the very vast majority of Ayurvedic practices. And uh, as uh, Dr. Ashok was uh, telling about that recently, they come across with this uh, Siddha medicine and their uh, uniqueness. Uh, I believe that you might have come across with the homeopathy also. Uh, I tried to put something from my end. Uh, this is my own perception, the uniqueness of Yunani medicine. Maybe some of the things are overlapping, it seems to be. Uh, you people can best judge it and tell me. Uh, the most important point, what I believe is, uh, the uniqueness of Yunani system of medicine is the fundamentals of Yunani medicine, particularly it based upon the Greek philosophy. I don't think so. Today, there is no country or there is no particular science where still this Greek philosophy is being used. And this Greek philosophy, with reference to the fundamentals of sciences, it depends upon four elements, four body fluids, and four what is called as the temperaments are there. Uh, the other sciences, we have a difference, so it makes a uniqueness of Yunani medicine. As I said, the Yunani system of medicine take the patient while providing the treatment as in a holistic approach. I said that without treating. Uh, we, he, as a Yunani practitioner, we won't treat the symptom, we treat complete cause, etiology, and entire thing into consideration, keeping the physical, mental aspect of the individual and keeping equal importance to the environment factors of the patient with what is called as a tailored or specifically designed treatment to the individual. And this personalized treatment is also something uh, where, because every individual is having different temperament, the bizarre, no two individuals are alike. So the diseases are also different. Though the diseases may be one, but drugs are work in different uh, visage wise. So the treatment, what Yunani people will provide will be a personalized treatment and the treatment could be of a drug, diet, sometimes it could be a regimen also. So personalized treatment where I can say uh, very tailored treatment will be given. Uh, the uniqueness of Yunani system of medicine is different regimens are there, which comes under the part of what is called as Ilad uh, uh, bin here, the first one is the hijama. It is one of the blood letting procedure. Today, I think globally people are very apprehended to go for blood letting procedure. But globally, blood letting procedures are being practiced by United people. And uh, most of you people are also getting benefit. You people are also referring for this blood letting procedure hijama. Uh, this is uh, conventionally say wet cupping. And uh, there is a renaissance of use of this irsal and leaching therapy after this plastic surgery and this reconstruction therapy has been started. Uh, we are in a use since the big time and uh, there is a winner section or we call it as a phlebotomy because Yunani is the one which also promote venous section as well as arteriotomy. That's a, why, that is the reason I'm using the word phlebotomy where some experts also give puncture to the arteries if it is required though this is not in practice but the most common puncturing of venous their venous section is there. Uh, I think this is the uniqueness of Yunani system of medicine where the people are more uh, attracted to take the treatment. People come forward to receive the treatment. Yeah, and this is hammam is one of the part of the regimental therapy. I believe because if you look at this Indian difference, uh, uh, Indian medical system sciences and globally, uh, we have a very elaborate description, indication, uses and contraindications of hammam and people prefer to take this hammam. And I, to, best, to the best of my understanding, I believe that there is a separate branch, branch of medical science is emerged as a balinology where medical hammams have been recommended that what we have and the, uh, there is the uniqueness of Yunani medicine which is what we have. And the, it is my belief that most of the classical concept of Yunani were scientifically validated. Some of them have been taken over by the conventional science of the people and they are going to prove scientifically. And, uh, and uh, this is my submission. This is the only science 
there is no such a management of the spirituality like other medical sciences of India is there. Unani system of medicine, there is no such a description of spirituality. It's only talk about mental and physical illnesses. And there is a separate, a parallel science of medicine is there that comes under the category of uh, prophetic medicine. But if you look at this Unani practice, no Unani practitioner, no literature is talk about the spirituality. But while practicing, while giving the treatment, spiritual health is also being paid importance with the consideration of the prophetic medicine of the people who are expert into this one. Finally, though this uh, Unani system of medicine is not a native to India, like other system, of course, it came into India somewhere 7th and 8th century, but now still the people are using, by billions of the people are using in India. So this is the what I, uniqueness of this Unani system of medicine for the last several years. Now it is taking a patronage of the ruler as well as the people, and now people are consistently getting benefit and also giving good feedback. Uh, now this is your time to ask anything about to get clarified. My talk is over. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your uh, collaborative talk on Unani medicine. Thank you very much, sir, Professor Dr. Alimuddin, sir. We could able to identify some of the similarities too. between our system of medicine as well as the treatment modalities of Unani system of medicine as well. And even in the past also, in the previous uh, guest lecture, when we could able to <clears throat> notice some of the similarities of the treatments in Sita system of medicine as well. So nice to know, sir. Now may I request uh, PG scholars, UG students, if at all any queries are there, please have an interactive session with uh, Professor Limuddin, sir. Scholars, please. Please raise your questions. <clears throat> Sir, before they gear up, uh, let me ask sir, two questions. Sir, please. In, in Ayurveda, we are having some wellness medicine, sir. Right. Not only for therapeutic purpose. Therapy, therapy comes the next, sir. First thing is, for the betterment of oneself, we are having certain sort of medications. One has to practice as a daily regimen to prevent the upcoming morbidities or the upcoming manifestations of the deformities. Like that, if at all any wellness medicines are there in the United system of medicine? Sir, truly, we do have. Uh, as I said, this, if you look at the fundamental, is it I'm audible now? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Yeah. If you look at the fundamentals of uh, Unani medicine, I have focused this uh, role and importance of Asbaba Sitta Zaruriya. The, pre, the six prerequisites are there. Uh, like, uh, I, I think uh, I can take this issue as Ayurvedic people believe that there's a Dinacharya, Ritucharya are there. Yes. Similarly, this Asbaba Sitta Zorya is also going to say about that one has to follow all the six essential uh, prerequisites are there. Uh, okay. You have to keep your air good in condition. It should not be vitiated, mutilated with any toxic substances. And okay. one has to take the diet uh, in appropriate quantity based upon your lifestyle. Like whether you are a sedentary life, then what is the calories? If you are a very strenuous worker, like the, there is a moderation, there is a modulation of all these six essential Prerequisite is that one has to maintain mm. this physical movement and the rest, psychic movement and rest. I'm just going on putting, feeding myself without doing any physical activity. Obviously, such a things can cause diseases of obstruction. We believe it mm. as a amraze sudud or amraze etibas. So, to control all these things as a part of the welfare or the well being of this individual, generally we ask the patient to follow this asbabe sitta zurve as a regular habit. Okay. And followed by some medications are there that can be given as a uh, tonics. That is what is called as uh, ke liye. So that will keep the people according to age, according to mizaj, according to their environmental factors. We have a very good description of this wellness concept of wellness. Sir, one more thing is we are having this detoxification therapies. We, we call it as panchakarmas. Sir. Therapeutic panchakarma is different. Once the disease has occurred, then we are having a specific panchakarma line of a treatment. But before the manifestation of a disease itself, 
to prevent the diseases we need to undergo the panchakarma seasonal panchakarma we call it as detoxification therapies like that if if at all any detoxification therapies are there correct sir uh, i i think your question is over or you want to say no over, over sir sir uh, if you take you go back to the methods of treatment what we have one is i said ilaj with dawa that is pharmacotherapy ilaj with dawa dietotherapy third part is ilaj with tadbir tadbir sir nothing but the regimental therapy if you look at this therapies regimens what we have as if it's more than 100 regimens are there uh, most of these are some of the regimens which are reflected in the panchakarma okay where we are going to talk about vaman virochan nasya and uh, basti and rakta mokshana sometimes you may not be follow the rakta mokshana you have some other things are there basti and basti is there all these things are there in the regimental therapy ilaj with tadbir is there and as a unani practitioner physician we too follow that's a prophylactic therapies and therapeutic regimens are there prophylactic regimens therapeutic regimens based upon the condition suppose if a person is likely to fall into the particular kind of disease we recommend them the prophylactic regimens if it is disease occurs then we provide them therapeutic regimens but one term one principle according to unani is this before you are undertaking any regimen tadbir we need to go for the principle of concoction shodhana what you said detoxification we call it as a munzij nuzij mean we'll give some medication to the patient that will be kept for certain period based upon the predominance of particular kind of matter initially that will be uh, given for the number of days followed by laxatives and again if the body temperature temperament visage is good okay if it is required we'll try to normalize it then if it is required to give tonic and subsequently any appropriate regimen will be given these things will be happen in both prophylactic and the therapeutic purva karma paschat karma like what you con- the concept what we have we too follow the same thing from regimens yes thank you sir any queries from the scholars pg scholars <clears throat> thank you sir anyhow uh, <clears throat> i will be sharing the queries of the scholars please in sir in discussion if any queries are raised please. definitely i will tell you sir i will convey the queries to your mail id and once again i am for very much sorry dr dasha ashok ji for any query just i have forwarded my contact detail here on my email id and sometimes if they can go for one of my youtube channels also there probably this video is also going to be uploaded there yes the, i have the already discussed topics are there ask them feel free if you have any query let them contact i am available here for any thing from my end to Promote, promote promote the this unani system of medicine and to go for integration of unani system of medicine with other indian system of medicines thank you sir and we on behalf of uh, kli ayurved on behalf of uh, kahers pm kankanwadi ayurveda mahavidyalaya belagavi i wholeheartedly thank uh, professor dr alimuddin uh, kumri sir for accepting our uh, invitation actually sir he is referred by dr aziz arba one of our professor of kamal vidya uh, from oh, okay. nutrition and uh, sir has readily accepted our invitation and delivered a uh, very innovative and uh, brief talk about uh, the introduction of pan system of medicine definitely our ayush fraternity uh, got sensitized about the various systems of medicine and we could able to uh, know the beauty of the science where some of the therapies are mimicking some of the therapies are really nothing but they are going join joining together one by one joining hand together so in the future also in the globalization in the integrative medicine definitely we will be taking part by taking some integrated uh, research works and work together and i wholeheartedly thank you once again sir thank you thank you anand